So, this is where the journey begins. I just finished driving down Kingsmere Road, and I just got to the put-in. And uh, just the road, just the gravel road to get here was amazing. I saw probably like 15 deer, um, a mom and some fawns. I just came in and saw a huge buck, like a five-point buck right when I drove in. It's unbelievable, the wildlife here. I saw foxes and um, wild mink. And... Anyways, I got to paddle up the stream, and uh, then I do a portage into Kingsmere Lake. So this is the one kilometer portage from Mosque Sioux to Kingsmere Lake and uh, they have these trolleys. Let's take a look at that. You just throw your canoe on it and push it. It's not bad. <laughs> Walking the path of history. This is uh, the route that Grey Owl and Anahara would have done on a regular basis to get home anytime they wanted to get groceries or do anything. So doesn't look like a whole lot of current. I gave it a few goes, but it couldn't quite uh, push up it. So I just kind of kept backing up into the SETI and uh, trying to give it another shot, but it got so close and then it started to push me back. So I uh, pulled up here on this dam and uh, I'm just gonna push across it. So I just finished paddling the Kingsmere River and uh, it was beautiful, but uh, more intense than I expected. And now I gotta paddle 20 kilometers that way to get to my campsite. It's 1041. I pushed off at 9 o'clock, so it took me almost two hours just to get to Kingsmere Lake. But I was taking it pretty slow, uh, taking my time. There's a moose over here. Let's see if I can get close enough to see it. I really should have brought a zoom lens. It's a feeding frenzy over here. There's a uh, female moose and a baby deer sitting grazing and drinking water together right here. And the, the moose kind of looked up at me and took one step forward, and I paddled away because. You never know, those moose can get violent. What a beautiful lake. It's just like a huge swimming pool with a sand bottom. It's gorgeous out here. <laughs> Paradise. Look at that. What a beautiful day. This is Kingsmere Lake. It's shallow, pretty far from shore. It's hard to even stay in the canoe. I just want to jump out and go for a swim. I've been reading a lot of Grey Owl lately, and I've also been reading the book by his wife, Anahara, and everything I read on the internet, it just, it, it's so negative, and it, you know, talks about him pretending to be a Red Indian, and I don't really see it that way. I see him as a 17-year-old boy wanting to get away from his family there, and fall in love with Canada, and the wilderness, and starting to trap because he just wanted to live out in the woods and live in the wilderness. He, he did some other jobs, of course. Um, and then it wasn't until they adopted some beaver kits that they both uh, fell in love with animals. And shortly after that, they decided to stop trapping. And Grey Owl had become a writer at this point. But he wasn't pretending to be Grey Owl, he was just Archie and just an outdoor wilderness guy. He was a conservationist ahead of his time. That's kind of a term people use. He had started to get some credibility as a writer. The Canadian government gave him an opportunity to build his beaver sanctuary. And he had already paddled Ontario, paddled Manitoba, and yet he chose this place. He had, he had weeks to paddle around in Saskatchewan and uh, look for the perfect place to make a beaver sanctuary. And he chose this lake that I'm about to be paddling into, and the one that I'm paddling on now, as his place to live and make his beaver colony. So I was really curious to paddle it for myself and see how it compares to other places that I've paddled. And it's absolutely beautiful. The water is so clear. It's just like a sand bottom the whole way through. And uh, right now the lake's really calm and it's just absolutely gorgeous. So I can understand why he chose this place. It's beautiful here. So I just had quite an experience. A black bear and I just scared the crap out of each other. I was sitting here making uh, lunch, had my back to the forest, and I just heard like thunder. And then it, I stopped kind of moving to hear it, and it was stopped, there was no more sound. 
So I stand up, I look around, and there's a black bear like right here. He was came running down this hill probably to go jump into the water, have something to drink. He was right here by this tree. And so I started making noise and he turned around, ran a little ways, looked back, went up the hill a little further, looked back, and then eventually kind of moseyed on up this big hill here. But whew, he didn't see me at all. I can almost guarantee it. That's why it's you gotta keep making noise, keep whistling, talking to yourself out here because uh these animals will sneak up on you. They're not used to you being out here in their forest. Home in the boreal, where the moose and the caribou roam. I call this my home. The bears want my don't. And those bears won't leave me alone. Woo! Woo! Ah, feels good. Woo! kind of fun talking to yourself to get rid of the bears. <laughs> oh, that feels nice. So after my little bear encounter there, I decided to uh, take my lunch to go. So I had a quick swim and uh, took my rice and souvlaki for the road. I mean, the water. So now here eating with the loons. Continue my paddle in a bit. There's about 20 loons right here in the water behind me. I don't want to get too close and scare them away because they're just doing some kind of flapping dance and enjoying the sun. But I've never seen that many loons at one time. Unbelievable. We were just talking about how we usually only see loons on their own or in pairs, but here we go. There's about 20 or 30, maybe, maybe 40. Whew. It's a long paddle. I've paddled about uh, 18 kilometers today. No, probably 20 kilometers, considering the rivers. And I still got about two more kilometers to go, and I'm beat, and I'm getting sunburnt. I got my sleeves on here to stop the burn, because of course I forgot to bring a sunscreen. What an idiot. Um, and I'm talking to the camera because I need an excuse not to paddle because I'm exhausted. But what I was thinking was. Grey Owl must have really loved Anahara because that's a long paddle. Hold on. Grey Owl must have really loved Anahara because that is a long paddle to go mail the letter. He was sending her letters quite regularly. And I really love Caitlin. <laughs> but I don't know if I could do that paddle more than once a week. At least not every day. It takes a whole day. He must have been a good paddler. Sorry. He must have been an extremely good paddler. Thank goodness. That was a long paddle. But we're getting close. Because that sign says Grey Owl's Cabin that way. So here we are at the North End campsite. And uh, Looks like I get a campsite right on the water. Beautiful, look at that view. What more could you ask for? So I'm definitely not cut out to be a nature photographer. It seems like every time I put my camera down, nature comes out. I was just having a little swim here on the beach and uh, a little red fox came, pulled something out of the water here. So I'm gonna go see what it is. When I say this place is a zoo, like it really is, there's like five different types of animal tracks on this beach. All in front of my campsite. So just in case 22 kilometers of canoeing today wasn't enough of a workout, I'm gonna do 3.2 kilometers of hiking now. In bear country. Let's hope this goes well. Things just went from bad to awesome. I was starting that 3.2 kilometer portage and the mosquitoes were so bad and uh, I saw a side trail for the portage route and I wasn't bringing my canoe because I was under the impression that you had to do the canoe portage 3.2 kilometers. Here I just did a little side trail and there happened to be canoes and paddles so <laughs> I'm set up with a new canoe and I can see Grey Owl's cabin in the distance and it's a beautiful night. This is awesome. <laughs> wow. I can't believe I'm actually here. Who would have thought that 
I grew up so close to Grey Owl's cabin and didn't even know it was here until I moved to Ontario and got into bushcraft and then discovered the story that way. Now I'm back to see it for myself. This is magical. I'm at Grey Owl's cabin and if you look at the water you'll see a bunch of fish splashing eating the bugs off the water. Oh, they stopped. They'll be back. So we made it. We're finally at Grey Owl's cabin. That was a long canoe and a uh, hot day, but man, look at this place. This is paradise. This is absolutely gorgeous. This is one of the most beautiful lakes I've ever seen in my entire life. An absolutely gorgeous cabin. Beautiful lot. Like, this is just, this is unbelievable. I can see why he chose this place. Come on in, I'll show you around. <laughs> so can you imagine having a beaver den in your house? Grey Owl, December 10th, 1937, the year before he died. <laughs> I'm not sure if I should be doing this, but as someone who uses the Grey Owl style paddle and makes my own paddles, I couldn't help it. Check this out. Grey Owl, December 10th, 1937. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty rough carbon, but it's smooth, it's been used, it's been axed out. This is a paddle made with an axe and used. <laughs> Unbelievable. I can't believe this is here. I better go put it back. Look at the size of this poplar tree. Unreal. Coincidentally, its roots grow in the graveyard of Grey Owl and his family. I don't want to leave this place. Just from the moment I saw it from across the lake, I knew I was going to love this cabin. And it is everything that I imagined and more. It's absolutely beautiful. This lake is absolutely beautiful. Like, unreal. I want a place like this. <laughs> I need, I need a trust in timber cabin. I gotta make this happen. What a place. I'm the only one out here. I've got this whole lake to myself. I haven't seen a single person on the trail, on the water, in the cabin. Feels like I live here. I kind of expect him just to come out of the cabin and say, Where are you going? Let's have some tea. <laughs> Maybe we'll go fishing. I'd be curious to know what Grey Owl's fishing technique was. Did they use bait?
I cannot get over how beautifully calm this lake is. I'm just paddling on glass here. It's awesome. Gray Owl's cabin in the distance. I don't know if you can still see it yet. Back there. I don't want to leave this place. I don't want to leave. It's possibly an ancestor of Jelly Roll right there. <laughs> Not quite as tame as those ones. Check out this portage. It's uh, This is the one entrance by canoe into the lake. Look how beautiful and natural it is still. And there's just unchained canoes, three canoes and paddles. I gotta say, Saskatchewan has a few things going for it here. What a beautiful place. There goes the beaver. This is a, a wonderful park. It feels like I'm in a zoo without gates. There are so many animals. No sign of violence from any of them, but uh, you gotta be careful. Uh, so I've got my guard up, but uh, man, this place is unreal. Good morning, it is 6.30 and I'm leaving the North End campsite on Kingsmore Lake. So now I have to paddle 20 kilometers that way. all to myself. Full camps I hear and I'm the only one on it. People are missing out. I thought this was a really important trip to just document and uh, it's a trip I'd like to do again. Hopefully um, make a special film about it but uh, for right now I just wanted to throw all this footage in a timeline and uh, share it with all of you. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs>